If I figure out what triggers you, and I realize that there's a look on my face that triggers you, but I don't see the look on my face, and I finally discover it, and I can get some control over the look on my face and even find out why that look comes onto my face, it's amazing how subtle triggers are happening, and you blame the other person, but you're actually pulling their triggers all the time, pushing their buttons all the time. You don't know that you are. All you see is their behavior. Where is that behavior coming from? Who knows? It's not that you're trying to transform other people. You're just trying to get them to respond to you in a different way. That's it. So that, that's where my definition of effective communication comes from. The effectiveness of your communication is measured by the response you get. So then you start, if you can take that in deeply, what it means that if you're not getting the response that you want, first of all, it assumes that when you get this behavior, this quote, disruptive behavior, You'd really like to get a different behavior from this person, a different response. Okay, so you do, so, so start thinking about the response you want, not the one that you don't want. What do you want instead of the one you're getting? Focus on that and start thinking, how can I get them to respond to me in this way? Well, see, as soon as you start doing that, guess what you're doing? You're developing a strategy. I could try this. I could try this. I could try this. Does that get me the response I want? Well, maybe I could try this. Does that get me the response? But you're engaged in you are doing something. See, as soon as you say there's a problem with them and you lose your respect for them, you're abdicating yourself of any responsibility whatsoever. You're saying, I'm already doing everything I need to do. I have no need to change my behavior. They need to change their behavior. Well, that's all well and good, but it ain't going to happen. What, what, what is the miracle that's going to cause them to just change? People don't change spontaneously. They're either going to change themselves or you are going to be a catalyst for change. And so, 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 you know, let's take it back to your home again. Because, you know, some people don't care about the people that they're working with enough to, to invest in strategies to try to work with them, but maybe you do care about the people in your home. I mean, this class isn't just about work, it's about home, too. And, and, and you care about your kids, and you care about your, your partner, and, you know, and all these kinds of things are going on. And, and uh, if you could become a catalyst for change, and not that you're just trying to manipulate and transform this person, because they, you know, they've had invested a lifetime in becoming who they are and developing all their habits, but, but just think about how they respond to you in certain situations. And, yeah, maybe I can get them to respond to me. And I, 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 whenever I talk about finances, my wife gets mad. Okay, how do I talk about finances? Is there another way that I could talk about finances? You might find out that whenever you talk about finances, you're blaming her for spending too much. Okay? And what's actually triggered in office is because you, you pull out the credit card statement and you say, look at this and look at this and look at this and haven't we talked about not spending money? And all of a sudden, this reaction happens. And you don't like the reaction. Well, if you don't like the reaction, you say, what do you mean? I can't talk about it? What are we supposed to do? Just go in debt? This is, see, this is your brain trying to rationalize your bad behavior. So look at, look at the way you're talking, if you could, if you could see how you're coming off, and, and, and maybe you. So one of the things that I do in some of the classes is we have everybody take personality tests. We find that we, we have these different personalities. And, so, and so, so, so some people are very task oriented, some people are very feeling oriented, and so forth. So maybe you're feeling oriented and you're, you're living with somebody who's very task oriented. Well, they, they have a very different way of responding to situations. Or like say, you know, if you're task oriented and your partner is feeling oriented. So you're sitting here with this list of expenses and you're going, that was wrong, that was wrong, that was wrong, and I'm just pointing it out. We're just looking at numbers. But they're taking everything you're saying personally. And inside their head they're going, well you do that too, and why are you treating me this way? And sometimes when people feel hurt, they cry. But then some people have learned that when I cry, it makes me feel very powerless. So even as a child, when I got hurt, I didn't cry. 
I got mad. That works better. I feel more powerful. Because I get tired of people making me cry. So I'll let them make me get mad instead. So now the task-oriented person is going through and saying, psh, 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 and the other person's getting mad. They say, why does she get mad every time I talk about it? Well, it's just people. Okay, if you don't want the mad response, but you want to talk about finances, start trying some different ways of talking about finances, and maybe you'll figure out how not to get the mad response. And some people will say, I shouldn't have to tiptoe around these things. I should be able to just be, I'm honest. I, see, here's the mind again, wants to rationalize. <laughs> I'm just being honest, and every time I'm honest, this person gets upset. You don't like honesty? Stop calling it honesty. Instead, call it bluntness and, 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 and disregard for other people's feelings. You don't see it that way. I don't see it as disregard for your feelings. Yeah, but see, you're not as sensitive and feeling-oriented as this person is. So what to you is bluntness and honesty, which you revere and think is a great leadership quality, to them, they're thinking, you're evil. <laughs> You know, we're in this together and you're constantly beating me up and making me feel bad about myself. You do this to me. Why do you do this to me? I mean, this is just, this is just how it works. Okay, and when you understand that it works this way and you get a response out of somebody that you don't like, your first thing should be, you know, how can I communicate in a different way so that I don't get the response that I don't like, but I get the response that I do want. So start thinking about the response that you want. And think, how can I get that? How can I get that? Try this. Nope, that didn't work. Try this. Try this. And pretty soon you start to figure it out. So if you're a task-oriented person, then you have to start to develop your social awareness to be able to tune into somebody else and to find out how you can maybe connect with them in a different way. And if you think you shouldn't have to do that, well, then don't. Just keep on blaming other people. A lot of evil people in the world, if you want to start looking at it that way. <laughs> there aren't very many at all when you start taking the responsibility for your communication. <laughs>